Guys on this hunt, celebrity pro staffer Brandon Ryder and I are going to West Texas to hunt some big audad. Stay tuned, it's going to be great. I'd probably make a whole lot more money if I'd move down to the big city. But that's just me. That's just me. I was born and raised a country boy. And that's all I about five hours of driving left and uh, we were just really really excited and uh, we knew what was in store for us we've been talking to Wes Monday and he said he already had some odd ads spotted and this was all brand new to me and Brandon and we just we couldn't wait to get there and check out what uh, Double Diamond hunts have to offer mm. so is what well, I mean what's the preferred shot here neck no no all shoulder right dead in the shoulder because they're African animals, their leg goes straight mm -hmm. and it makes a V. Okay. Shoot right in the shoulder. Okay. Now they got their shin bone. Mm hmm. That shoot right in the shoulder. Good deal. Yeah. Here at Double Diamond Outfitters, I specialize in pretty much everything Texas has to offer. I've got free range whitetail in South Texas, free range Audad out here in West Texas, which is what we're hunting on this hunt. When you book a hunt with me, you have exclusive rights to that ranch for the duration of your hunt. Uh, all of my hunts are fully guided, meals, lodging, everything's included. Basically all you need to do is get there and have your valid Texas hunting license. Uh, I've got very experienced guides, cooks, I can cater to the individual, father-son, father-daughter, corporate groups, uh, or just a bunch of friends wanting to go hunting. Uh, anything that you desire to hunt in Texas, I've got it, and I can I can take care of you. I tell you what, we couldn't wait. We were here ready to head out to the shooting range. We took a couple practice shots. Rifles were dead on, and we went out for that first evening hunt. In the closet, you can hang them right next to mine. Don't be afraid to let go, cause I'll be sure to hold on. We were still just kind of in awe of the whole mountainous terrain we never knew it was like this in Texas you know we we've been through but until you get out and hike up these mountains you really don't you know understand just how mountainous it really can be in West Texas we're 20 miles north of Marfa and uh, most of the people in that area they're used to this kind of terrain but it's it's nothing like back home we got on the uh, first group of Audad and we got out we set out and made our trek up the mountains and got set up and West went over the hill looking and Sure enough, we were on them. But oh, they're, wow. they're coming up. They're all out in the valley. There's a there's a valley right here uh -huh. on the other side of this, and they're all moving up. I didn't see that other herd. I saw one from that other herd. Mm -hmm. But there's at least one really good ram in that herd moving up the hill. Either way, the wind's coming to us. I don't know what they're gonna do, but I don't think we can get to that other herd for right now. Okay. So I think we ought to at least go look at these. Okay. So, That's a shooter. The one his head's down right now. He's looking at us. All you can see is his neck and his head. 
we get up in the position and Brandon's he's getting down we've picked out an animal and he just can't get steady and the group the group isn't willing to sit around very long so they take their uh, time milling on and we just get some good footage of them and let them go we know we've got plenty of hunting ahead and uh, we're gonna be on more animals <music> We got really close. Brandon was, uh, he was within 30 seconds of pulling the trigger on that big odd dad we come across earlier. Um, Wes went back over the hills and after we got back to the top, the other side that they went up and he tried to locate them, but he did the, he said they did what they do best. They disappeared. So I know one thing, if you want to get in shape, come out here with Wes, because you'll definitely do it. This is some beautiful country. Even found me a lucky horseshoe. I'm we'll gonna give that to my son Thomas after we use it this week. And uh, hopefully tomorrow will be a different story and get right back on. It's so beautiful, the sun's just coming up, and uh, hopefully we have a successful hunt this morning. There's going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of hiking, a lot of walking, a lot of climbing hills, going through gullies, whatever we got to do to get to them, but uh, I think today's the day, so let's go. We took off, went back looking for the same group. We ended up finding another group with even more animals in this group. West just went over the hill to spot a herd, and uh, we drove up this road to get a closer, a little closer, and we came across this wallow where they they get in here and they kind of roll around and, and dust themselves. So hopefully we can get a shot here pretty quick. We parked the buggy, we hiked straight up a mountain, glassed over, we found the animals, we dropped back down another draw and come up on top of another mountain and that's where Wes went up and he took a good look and he found and confirmed that there were three good mature rams in that herd. We got a the herd of all that right over the top of this cholla. They're where they're going to sit all day long. They've got a great vantage point. They can see everything. They've got the wind and they've got they've got shade. So they're going to stay there all day long until they get up and get water. As long as we, as long as we move real slow to these yuccas and don't let them see us, it's probably going to be about a 400-yard shot. But I mean, we've got a good shot, and it, they don't know we're here. Don't have a clue. They're they're just hanging out, so uh, we're just going to try and ease up real slow, real slow to these yuccas, and then try and get a shot on them. Just take our time, ease up there, and see what we can do. Vincent, the camera guy, uh, Brandon and Wes, they get up and get set and we're looking over the herd and looking over the herd and Brandon picks out the one he wants and he gets ready and settles in to make a 450 yard shot. Clint, 
Clint, come here. Clint, come here. Now, as soon as Brandon shoots his animal, that, it goes nowhere. We know for sure that animal's down. And Wes turns around to me and says, Clint, come on, come on, get on down here. We've got another ram in the herd that's just standing there. So, so I move up into position. Brandon gives me the rifle. It's, it's real, there's a lot of excitement going on. Brandon just made a 450 yard shot and everybody's giving high fives. And we realize we've, we can get this done in a matter of minutes. Okay, he's just above the yucca on the right. He's he's just kind of quartering, looking to the left. He's the fourth one from the right. See that one going over the hill? I get into position and uh, right about the time that all the animals are about to leave and I picked out the one that needed to be taken out and they go to moving and, and Wes is telling me no shot, no shot. Once they move, they're gone. And they just happen to give me a split second. And it, now the animals are at 500 yards. And Wes asked me if I'm on him and I take the shot. Are you on him? Right there. You hit him. I think you hit him. That was a that was a fun shot, man. It was really good. Different shot to take. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Dude. Oh, that's good. Awesome you just crushed shot, him, man. I mean, you sniped him. I can't see him. He no, sniped him. I mean, just. Yeah, baby. <laughs> good times. Awesome. Good job, man. One thing. I... Right over there. There's a big all dad. And he's down. And I shot him from that. That mountain way over there. So, long, long, long shot. <laughs> we got 450 yards. Uh, Wes helped me tremendously. Coached me through it. Well, needless to say, we walk up on Brandon's animal, and it was it was nothing but high fives. It was awesome, man. Yeah, we got it. Two days. Well, actually, just a evening hunt yesterday. Missed an opportunity then, but man, we got on them this morning. Rarely, really quickly. Surprising how quickly we got on them. And then it was uh, dodging mountains, trying to get to the right one. And, and Wes definitely picked the right mountain. There he is, let's go check him out, man. That's big. What's this? Thanks for letting this one go. <laughs> Kill shot. I had it like right here. I had it like right here. But he ran up, what, another 50 yards? Yeah. Didn't get far. That's a stud, man. Oh. What do you think that scored? I'd say he's got 13 inch bases and he's probably 31. I mean, maybe 32, the way he goes back oh like that. He's a, I mean, he's a. Where's yours? Hey, the net. I see what you're talking about now. Oh, yeah. 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 Really? <laughs> awesome. But as you can see, uh, I'd made my shot and this animal didn't go 30 or 40 yards, and boy, was he a big one. After packing these animals down the mountain, we were really tired, and uh, Brandon wanted to cook some of his signature chili and of course nobody was gonna be against that. So we get back to camp, Brandon starts cooking. We take showers, get nice and comfortable, and uh, that night we we're gonna listen to some music around the campfire from Mr. Brandon Ryder. So I'm fixing to put on uh, our odd dad steaks from this afternoon from, from Clint's odd dad. Uh, we've got some backstrap that we've been marinating for a few hours this afternoon, and 
You can see we're already cooking some beer butt chicken and uh, a few other things, but we're about to put this on. And People say that you can't eat all that, and we're about to prove that you can. We're about to make it delicious, and we're about to eat the heck out of it. So here goes nothing. Ah, oh, that was all right. Baby, you're a star and you know it Guiding me to where I'm lying to be tonight Ninety miles an hour after your love light You're my favorite really song that's like made my career and Yeah I mean, I, I get to close with it almost every night and, and it's really about my son I wrote it in a sunflower field in Coleman On September the 1st of 2004 I mean, that it was just, it was beautiful. It was just amazing to me. And um, I thought, man, if I could, if I could just stay in this moment longer than I know it's going to last, I would, if I could freeze frame time. And so mm -hmm. my wife and I has talked about starting possibly to have children. And, and uh, I wrote this song, and like, just like you were saying about that song that you wrote, no matter no time flat, you know. And, and luckily, it's uh, it's something that I love to sing, and hopefully, I'll get to the rest of my life. What's it called? It's oh, called sorry. Freeze Frame Time. It's a beautiful morning to see the sun rise. It's moments like this that make me wish. That I could freeze frame time. I got a hot cup of coffee. Gonna watch the world come alive. Surrounded by nature, like on the innocence of a newborn child. Like to pick my guitar and sing. I like to do my own thing. I like to drink a little cold beer on a Saturday night. I like to sit on that front porch swing. Hear my baby listening to the whipper will sing. It's a simple way of life, but that's just me. Yeah, that's just me. That's just me. I probably make a whole lot more money if I move down to the big city. Yeah, that's just me. That's just me Yeah, I was born and raised a country boy And that's all I'm ever gonna be I like to sit in the sunflower fields And watch that sunrise over the hills And watch them birds fly in like an old thundercloud I like to sit in my old dear stand Waiting for that big buck to show up again It's a simple way of life But that's just me Yeah, that's just me That's just me I'd rather make a whole lot more money If I move down to the big city But that's just me Yeah, that's just me Yeah, I was born and raised a country boy That's all I'm ever gonna be Yeah, in these East Texas piney woods, they've always been my home. Yeah, and I'm damn lucky to have a family to raise and 
call my own. You see, the grass ain't always greener on the other side. Yeah, I'm with the yeah. Dear Chili at Deer Camp, we're bringing Deer Camp back. Yeah, and that's just me. Really, just looking back on the hunt, I can't believe how quickly the hunt went. We had five days and we were done the very next day after arriving. And uh, just to be able to be there and experience that with a good friend of mine, Vincent Hernandez, and a very good friend, uh, Brandon Ryder, it, I wouldn't replace it for anything. It was awesome. It's a hunt of a lifetime. You guys got to give Wes Mundy a call. Uh, we loaded up our animals. And uh, we headed back on the long trek back to Austin, Texas to drop Mr. Brandon Ryder off and then head back to Fort Worth. I hope you guys enjoyed that show. We had fun bringing it to you. Slow poking down a black top, cutting ties on a wide rock. There's a party on a dead end road. We're just hoping that the cops don't show. Somebody is looking for a fight It's gonna be that kind of night When I get too far from home I go find me a back road Well, I remember the summer That I turned 16 I made out with a girl in the back of her hatchback Chevrolet And I drank my first beer on the Louisiana